when he rose. He said, and the former shall not be remembered. Somebody's going out of here, you will never remember your struggle again. Yeah. Now come to mind, put it here studio now. Put it back from verse 17 to 19. So don't rush us to anywhere. He said, the former shall not be remembered, nor come into mind. Did you see the impact of his resurrection? Verse 18. He said, be ye glad and rejoice forever. For how many times? You will never see any of affliction of yesterday again. Yeah. So, forever, which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem and rejoicing. And her people are joy. Now, Jerusalem was already there. Are you hearing me? So he's not talking about earthly Jerusalem. No, he's talking about the church. He said, I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people because God's presence is here. And the voice of weeping shall be no more hard in her. You will never weep again. He said, no, the voice of crying. Whatever makes you to be sorrowful, today marks the end of that thing in your life. Yeah. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem. That is talking about the now. When he rose, he said, it is finished. He put an end to your struggle. He put an end to your joblessness. He put an end to your barrenness. He put an end to your affliction. An end to everything called misfortune. That's what he did. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And today will be a remarkable day to be much remembered in your life. Yeah. Lift up your hand to heaven. Father, this is the resurrection day. Speak to me. I want to have an impact and a counter with the power of resurrection of Jesus. I want to have an encounter with the power of resurrection. Speak to me, Lord. Speak to me in this service. I want to hear you. I want to know what is the resurrection of Jesus Christ all about. Speak to me this morning. Le pati katabra de Jesus ozo. Ye kladia kanto brediza. Ozu katabla de. Mande zi katabra. Kapaye keto zozo liya. Ezu kandaba liya. Ma kato brede Jesus ozo prete ke seke tolia. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Father, speak to us. We thank you for what Jesus did on the cross. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not die but see everlasting life. Father, thank you for the privilege to be saved. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Is yeah. this is verse 20. You know what the Bible says? It said, There shall be no more verse an infant of days, nor an old man that has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die in a hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a cause. Now I speak to someone here everything called death around your business, around your family, around your home. This resurrection of power shatter it in the name of Jesus Christ. Give Jesus a big hand as you get seated. Our prophetic focus for the month of April, the month of resurrection is wisdom from above makes high flyers. Wisdom from above makes high flyer. It will make you a high flyer in Jesus' mighty name. You know, God's servant said, God told him, there's a place for you at the top in case you are interested. And he said, and I quote, the, high, the harder you follow him, the higher you fly. The harder you follow Jesus, the higher you fly. This man, no one person here will crawl. If that's your expression, let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Not one person here will cry in the name of Jesus Christ. Right? Shout hallelujah. Amen. This morning, unveiling the power of his resurrection. Unveiling 
the power of his resurrection. John 14 verse 19. Because I live, ye shall live also. What is in the power of his resurrection? What is in the power of his resurrection? Resurrection is the greatest event in Christendom. Why? Because if Christ did not rise from the dead, our faith is in vain. And we are yet in our sins. First Corinthians chapter 15 verse 17. If Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Verse 19. If, this, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, if it is only now, ah, we are all of men most miserable. But now, say but now, is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruit of them that slept? Verse 21. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. Glory to God. Listen to this. Every religion has their leader dead. And you and I know their grief. The Hindu religion. The Buddhist religion. The Islamic religion. Name them. They have their leaders, their prophets, so-called. And we all know their grave. But their Christianity is a unique religion why we are talking about the life of God, not about man. Only one grave is empty throughout the whole universe. The Son of Man could not be held down by the power of grave. He rose on the third day. Every power holding you bound is shattered today. Yeah. Every power that won't let you advance is shattered now. Yeah. Every power holding your family in bondage of debt, lack, and want. This money, it is destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. He rose again. All throughout ages, the grave of all the prophets we know, we read in history. But the grave of some of mine is empty because he rose. He said, behold, it's no more there. It's not there. Everyone seated here, you are going to change level after this service. Where they used to see you struggle. Where they used to see you suffer. Where they used to see you borrow money. It is over this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. In the twinkling of an eye, there shall be a sporadic change come upon someone here. Yeah. As we are reaching home today, somebody is receiving news. Yeah. News of change. Yeah. News of advancement. Yeah. News of going forward. Yeah. News of victory. Yeah. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Yeah. You have suffered defeat long enough. From today, by the power of resurrection, you are back on the victory lane. Amen. No one person will suffer defeat here again. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That's what makes Christianity a unique religion. If so to say, Christianity is a way of life. Jesus said, I am the way. No prophet ever confessed that. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Glory to God. Let me say this. You were made a sinner. And you were also made righteous. Please pay attention. And I pray the Holy Ghost will give someone understanding. You were made a sinner. You were also made righteous. The choice is yours. You say, choose with this day whom thou will serve. Whether the God of your fathers on the other side or the God of Amora in whom you dwell. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. You are not a sinner because your deed, because of your deeds. Please pay attention. You are not a sinner because of your deeds. You are a sinner because of Adam's disobedience. 
Because of this, whatever good things you did, God never, and he has no capacity to make you righteous. Please pay attention. Since by one man, all human race became sinner. Therefore, there is no good deed you can do that can make you righteous. Please understand. Everyone born of woman has Adamic nature, which is the nature of sin. That is why you don't teach a child how to lie. They know how to lie. True or false, sir? You don't teach a child not to do bad. They naturally do bad. The capacity of doing good is not inherent in them. Pay attention. Because of this, whatever good thing you can do can never make you be righteous. Because you are righteous by doing good. No. Me, because you are not righteous by doing good. Please understand. No one become righteous by doing good. No. That you are doing some good things does not make you righteous. You do righteous things because you are made righteous. True or false? Romans chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Romans chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Quickly. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Did you see that? So by the obedience of one, shall many be made righteous. By one man, many were made sinners. So by also one man obedient, Jesus Christ, shall many be made righteous is that understood now verse 20 moreover the law enter that the office might abound but where sin abounded grace did much more abound that as sin has reigned unto death that is the wages of sin as sin has reigned unto death even so might grace in Christ Jesus reign through righteousness and to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know there are some sinners which do good things sometimes but that does not make them righteous. No. Because some sinners do righteous do some good things does not make them righteous. I have told you the Adamic nature, everyone came through that channel. It is not their deed that make them righteous. Similarly, it is not your deed that make you righteous. Being righteous now for you is based on the obedience of Jesus, the second Adam. The first Adam did something that imprisoned all human race. That's why I read Romans chapter 5 for you. The second Adam did something that liberated all human race that believe in him. Remember this. A righteous person is never at home with sin. Don't now take it for granted, sir. Your deeds, whether good, do not make you to be righteous. No. No. A sinner doing good does not mean it's righteous because the foundation is already faulty. Every man born of woman came by Adamic nature, the nature of sin. There is nothing you could now it is said a prisoner cannot be a prisoner, true or false. So there is no sacrifice you and I can offer God that can make you to be righteous. You were made sinner. And you are made righteous. Adam make you and I sinners. Jesus made you and I righteous. Did you get that? Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now somebody say, so we can do what we like. Remember, a righteous person is never at home with sin. 1 John chapter 3 verse 8 to 9. He say, he that believeth does not sin. He said, for this purpose, look at it, 1 John. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was, made, was manifested that he might what? 
destroy the works, the works, the entanglement of the devil. Verse 9. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He does not be at home with sin. Is that understood? For he is seed remaining in him. Now, look, take note of that one. Write it down in your book. For the seed of God remaining in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. This is what Jesus did for you and I. And I'd like you to pay attention. Shout hallelujah. You cannot be at home with sin. Though sometimes you and I may miss it. Is that understood? But this does not make you and I unrighteous when you miss it sometime. When you miss it the same way you didn't become righteous when you did something good. That you miss it is the same way. Missing it does not make you unrighteous. The same way when you are not born again, if you do good, does not make you righteous. No. I pray you understand what I'm saying this morning. Is somebody getting it? It's a teaching class. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, let me repeat it. Sometimes you may miss it, but you don't practice it. Sometimes you had a quarrel with your brother. You say something that are not good as a child of God, and the conscience come to you. What you did is not right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. I was provoked, and it ended there. That's why the Bible says in 4 John chapter 1, verse 8, if you say we do not sin, we're making a liar. For the truth is not in us. Glory to God. Then he said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, that even if we sin, we have the advocate, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Glory to Jesus. I said, he said, my little children, this thing right I unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, if you miss it, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus the righteous. When you call upon him, Lord, I'm sorry. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. For better understanding, listen. You didn't become righteous when you did something good things, when you did some good things. Now, let me ask you this. Your children do wrong at times, true or false? Does that make, does that mean they cease to be your children? Hello? The good mother, the good father. When your children do wrong, does that make them, they are no more your children? Oh. Was it even what they did that made them your children? Is that what they did that made them your children? It's not the good thing they did. It's not the bad thing they did. You gave back to them. That was how they become your children. <laughs> is somebody catching it oh glory to God it's deep but I know the only God will give you understanding you see you gave back to your children that's what makes them your children whatever they do now does not make them cease from being your children sir glory to God is somebody knowing where I'm going this morning shout hallelujah the same way God gave back to you and now in Christ Jesus that is how we become his children so the mistake you make now does not disqualify you from being God's children. <laughs> Just like no matter what your child does, sir, you can't deny. It's your seed. You get back to your children. Not because it does good or do bad. You get back to your children. That's why they are your children. But when they offend you, you are angry. You rebuke them. And they ask, Father, I'm sorry. Say so it's over. Glory to God. Do you see that powerful love that God has for us? Why? Somebody pay on the cross. The yoke of sin is destroyed over your destiny. You are no more a candidate of hell. By Christ, God has reconciled you back to him. Are you listening this morning? You are a candidate of heaven. Ambassador here on earth. So you are no more a victim of circumstance. You are no more a victim of situation. You are no more victim of pity. Jesus pay. When father looks at you, he sees Jesus in you. You are an adopted child. Are you clapping for Jesus this morning? <laughs> glory to God. I said glory to God. I'd like you to get this perspective in your mind. It will keep you away from a mediocrity. It will keep you away from living a sinful life. Do you know who you are? You are begotten of the Father. That you miss it sometimes does not mean condemnation. There is therefore no more condemnation for you. If anywhere you miss it, just ask the Father, I'm sorry Lord, forgive me. And it's over. Just like you can't deny your child, the Father can't deny you. Listen, I'm not saying we know he cannot. 
If you are truly born again, you can never be backslidden or go to hell. It is much more difficult to go to hell when you back, when, I mean, if, if at all you can backslid. A father cannot deny his son or his child. Two of us. Glory to God. Please, I'd like you to base your faith on this. If you believe Christ rose from the grave, you are out of the whim of the devil. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Every device of that enemy in any area of your life, every of his subtlety, every of his device in your family, in your home, this money, I condemn them in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I say shout hallelujah. Therefore, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 21. Jesus did not commit any sin. He was made sin. <laughs> he was made sin. He did not commit any sin. He has no nature of sin in him. He was made sin. We who committed sin by faith in him have now become righteous. Listen very well. You didn't just become righteous. Something went on. Something was done. Listen. Jesus did not commit any sin. He was made sin for you and I on the cross. We who committed sin by faith now, by faith in him now, have become righteous. Therefore, if anybody being Christ, righteousness is imputed into him, sir. Righteousness is imputed into you so that the new nature is recreated in you in righteousness. This is how God sees the man who is in Christ Jesus. No wonder Paul said in Acts 17 verse 13, he said the old time God winked at, but now he commanded every man everywhere. Acts chapter 17 verse 30. I'm excited for you this morning. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at. The time that the devil will take you on for, 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 for granted. The time that the devil will just cheat you is over. God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent. You see, sometimes we say something that looks like it is written. There is nowhere in the Bible that God says, confess your sin and then you'll be saved. No. He said, repent. Repent and be baptized and be saved. But sometimes we say, confess your sin and be saved. Did somebody pay for that? You only confess your faith in Christ Jesus. I believe you died for me. You went to the grave. And the third day you rose. Don't you see the way I say it? I'm so sure. I'm, I don't have any righteousness of me. The righteousness that I have is righteousness of Jesus Christ. That is my authority in Christ. When I say devil, it is enough. The devil knows. Glory to Jesus Listen, Abraham was declared righteous by faith. Nothing more. How much more you and I? We too, who are born again, are declared righteous by faith in Christ Jesus, who died for us and resurrected on the third day. Ephesians 2, 5 to 6. That's why the Bible says, we are seated in him at the right hand of God. Jesus paid it all. Who paid it? By grace, he has said, he paid it all. It is by grace. He blotted out the handwriting that was against you and I. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 to, verse 13 to 15. He blotted them out. The siege of family, the spell of family, the handwriting of curses of your father, of your mother, of my grandfather, great grandfather, that were written against me. Jesus blotted them out. He took it out of the way. He nailed it on the cross. You and I justify us for glory life, for glorify life. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now finally, Jesus became all that we were. Jesus Christ became all that we were. And we, <laughs> glory to God, 
Jesus became all that we were so that we can become all that he is. Jesus became all that we were. Did you see that? He became everything that we were. God poured his rod that was meant for you and me on Christ. The judgment of fury and condemnation was poured on Christ. Sir. It was meant for you and I, but God poured it on him. Wow. He took my shame. He took my reproach. The condemnation that was meant for you and me was poor on Christ. He stood for us. It's like they wanted to shoot somebody and you stand and say, it's me who did it. It's me who did it. So instead of you and I receiving the punishment, the bullet of sin, Christ received it. You have to know this. You see, the knowledge of this is important for your stability in faith. Shout hallelujah. God poise fury and judgment on Jesus. The one you deserve, the one I deserve. You deserve it, I deserve it, but you pour it on Christ Jesus. So that God will be free to declare us righteous. Glory to God. You see, all that we were to suffer, shame, lack, reproach, struggle, misfortune, Everything Jesus took right now, every and every spirit of untimely death, terminal disease, they are flying out of each family here. As I'm speaking to you now, the devil know every sickness in your body is jumping out of your system. Everything disorganizing any life, disorganizing your destiny, the fear of death, the fear of tomorrow, the fear of what to eat. The fear of every mundane affair is jumping out of your life right now in the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. hallelujah. That's why he crowned the cross. Eli, Eli, Lama Sabakhtani. <laughs> Father said, no way. You carry their sin. Let me deal with them. He said, no Lord. He even on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Because the veil, Jesus knew the veil was upon you and I. The veil was not removed. But this morning, every veil impinging your salvation will be totally destroyed. Amen. That's why this morning you have freedom. When they say, are you giving your, are you surrendering your heart to your, you walk out majestically. It has been paid for. It has been paid for, fully paid for. You walk out, no devil, no cultivar can hold you back. No scheme of witches can hold you back. You get out majestically with pride because you paid for it. Not one person this have will go down in life again. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Shout hallelujah. I said shout hallelujah. So the first miracle of Christ after he rose from the dead was an eye-opening miracle. He has to open their eyes. That is the veil over the heart of man was taken away. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 70 to 18, quickly. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 70 to 18. Glory to Jesus. I said, Glory to Jesus. It's like my time is fast spent. Oh, are you there? This I say, therefore, and testify in the law that ye henceforth work not as other Gentile work in the vanity of their mind. The veil. Verse 18. Having the understanding darkened. Being alienated from the life of God. Ooh, through what? The ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their heart. Blindness of the heart. He does not respect your degree. You can be a professor and be blinded in things of the spirit. Completely blinded. Permit me to say, you can be coming to church and be blinded. Religion has nothing to do with this. You can carry title and be blinded. He said, because their heart, put it back, Ephesians 4 18, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God. Did you see that? They can't enjoy the things of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. I decree this morning. 
by the power of the resurrection of Jesus, every blindness of heart through ignorance that has kept you in bondage of lack, of want, of fear of witches and wizards, I decree they be taken away now in the name of Jesus. I decree now they be torn to pieces in the name of Jesus. Somewhere today you are going to walk in your liberty. You are rising and walking in your liberty. In the name of Jesus the Christ. Let me hear your running. Amen. Amen. Time won't permit me. But let me just end it this way because of time. In Luke chapter 24, verse 13. Look at it. Jesus had been with disciples for three and a half years. That's why it is dangerous for darkness to, par to, 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 to continue in anyone's life. Very dangerous, sir. Don't mistake religion for Christianity. Verse 13 of Luke 24. And behold, two of them, two of disciples, went the same day to a village called Himanos, which was from Jerusalem about three square furlongs. Because of time, John to verse 16, verse 16. Verse 16, we won't be having time. Verse 16. But their eyes were holding. Their eyes were what? That they should not know him. Ah, whatever is holding you from the truth, from your breakthrough, it is destroyed now. Yeah. Everything holding you from the truth is destroyed. Yeah. Their eyes were holding. Some people read the Bible, they are reading letter. They are reading letter. Ah, every day, three chapter, but nothing. Their eyes were holding. So the Bible become a burdensome. Oh God, have you read the Bible? You say, I read them, oh, I read them. Now Joseph give back to Jesus, oh, I read them. He said, letter. He has no access to the revelation. No access to the truth. Ah, this morning you are gaining access to the truth. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 17. He said unto them, what manner of communication? Jesus is talking to them now. At this that ye have one to another. As you walk and are sad. Verse 18. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, ah, Are you a stranger in Jerusalem? Look at this man. Are you a stranger? And has not known the thing that which has come to pass in Jerusalem these days. Uh -uh. And it came to pass, verse 30, because of my time now. Verse 30. It came to pass as he sat at meat. <laughs> With them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were open. Their eyes were what? Their eyes were open and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Then opened he, verse 45, then opened he their understanding that they may understand the scriptures, the things that are meant for them. He opened their understanding that they may understand their scriptures, the things that is meant for you, your destiny, your future. They are in the book. He opened their eyes. This morning, Every blinded eye to the truth of his future must be open. Yeah. I'd like you to pray. My time, time, won't, time won't permit me this morning. I will continue in third service. I'd like you to pray. Jesus, thank you for the resurrection that you gave me. I know my future is secure in your hand. I know now I cannot be a victim of circumstance situation anymore. I know now who I am in Christ Jesus. Lift up your voice. Begin to thank him and confess your status. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for opening my side to the reality of the cross. Oh, all that was meant for me, you took it. You took my punishment. Now you gave me your glory. You gave me your status. You gave me your power. You gave me your authority. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Never to be a victim again. You made me to sit in Christ Jesus. In heavenly places. Far above witches. Far above wizards. Far above occultic powers. Far above every, every dominion. Every might. You gave me dominion over them. Reko suka tabali ankato zosoka. Akaya kanto brede. Repoto bredi kata. Rekoto bredi zozusa zete tete tete telia mango zusko polia e konto bredi kata yas kata bale 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 balam tabala rapa kata blade Jesus thank you thank you son of God 
In the precious name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. I like you. I like your eyes to be closed and your head bowed to Jesus. This morning is a unique morning. This is a day, not ordinary day. I want you to know Jesus went to the grave for you and uh, he rose on the third day. You are here this morning on this resurrection day. You want to give your heart so that your destiny will be open. You want to give your heart to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I don't want to be the same anymore. Now my eyes are open. I know the truth. I'm following you, Jesus, so that I can fulfill my destiny on the earth. I want to pray for you this morning. And I'd like you to say with me where you are. I'd like you to rise up on your feet. Rise up, everybody. Please rise up. Rise up. Honor and glory this week. I see you walking in the life of God this week. Whatever is called death around you is destroyed now. Whatever is disorganizing anyone is crushed now. Every fear in your heart, I cast it out in the name of Jesus. As the Lord liveth, whatever is baffling and battling your destiny, causing you fear in the heart, by Tuesday, you are receiving a news that will turn into testimony. Every shame meant for you goes back to your enemy. And because Jesus took your punishment, Abba, he took it. So whatever the enemy has planned against you falls on your enemy's head today. The way the plan of Hammer came upon his own head, everything against you shall be overturned and come against your enemy's head. In the name of Jesus, right? For you, walk in victory. Walk in newness of life. Walk in power. Walk in glory. Walk in favor. Walk in abundance. Return with testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you go, be blessed of the Lord. May his countenance shine upon you. May his light lighten your darkness out. In the name of Jesus Christ. I bless you with the blessing over this commission this morning. I bless you with the blessing over God, servant the apostle over this commission this morning. Thank you, Father. Jesus' precious name. Have you collected your handbill? Never